Hi, I'm Roy Huseman from Equipment Zone. Welcome to this short tutorial for our DTF product for the Epson 2100 using Garment Creator. Okay, the first thing that we're going to be doing is getting the actual DTF material, putting it on the platen. We do have material that fits perfectly on the platen as far as the 1416. I have the grip pad on my platen and I found that uh, having the grip pad, I don't really need to tape it down at all. And sometimes if you use a thicker tape, you might have to lower your platen further down, which I don't want to do. Uh, right now with the grip pad, my platen height is at two, okay? Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you in Garment Creator how to set it up real quick. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is bring in some artwork. So you can see I just brought in uh, three different types of logos and went ahead and uh, spaced them out evenly so I can cut them out. Uh, and this is actually a perfect product for doing, you know, a left chest logo for a customer or doing something on a sleeve or what have you for a small design. So you can see as far as my settings go, I just use the standard level three. And I know some people have been playing with this using level one or level two. The situation is, is with level three, I'm using a much smaller dot. And that gives me the ability to have a little bit better resolution. I'm also doing a, a, a unidirectional print to slow the speed down. So in between uh, print passes, it's actually allowing the ink to dry a little bit to keep it from puddling on the material. Okay, There are other materials out there and some of them puddle qu quite a bit. And subsequently, you have to run at a lower setting. But if you want to get that vibrancy, uh, this would be the setting I would recommend. Okay, so level three, unidirectional mode. And uh, basically, that's it. I did manipulate the color just to get a little bit more pop there. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit print. Obviously, the, the other thing that I did was reverse the image. Okay, flipping it the other direction. So let's go ahead and print. And you can come on over to the printer, wait for this to light up, and then we'll go ahead and print that. This, because there's so many images on here, it's going to take a little bit for it to print. Uh, so you need to anticipate that. And then once we do that, uh, what I do generally is just hit it real quick with a heat gun so I can get my white on it right away. Uh, and that way I get a better adhesion. I don't want to have an issue with that. And then once it's done with the white, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the heat gun again, just a little bit to keep too much powder uh, uh, from being applied to that or having the powder seep into the ink itself. Because what will happen is when you go to press it, you might get like little bumps everywhere on the image and you don't want that to happen. So it's ready to print. <clears throat> Go ahead and uh, let that print. So basically, uh, when we're applying the powder, just got a uh, small tray here. I know there's some things that we're looking at doing for uh, automatically applying the material, but a little salt shaker uh, works real well. Um, obviously you're gonna tip it from side to side, but I wanna really pinpoint the areas where the ink is with the material first. That way I'm not just pouring it on the whole sheet. The other reason why you wanna kinda hit it a little bit with the heat gun is if there's any residual moisture around the outer perimeter, which is gonna happen naturally, with the ink going down on that film, it, some of that water and moisture is gonna to seep to the outer perimeter, subsequently picking up some of this material. So we wanna make sure that uh, the heat gun gets that to dry out a little bit and you're gonna have less of an issue with that when you go to do the transfer. 
uh, while that's printing on that, I'm gonna show you, I actually printed one a little earlier and we can go ahead and kind of show you how nice and clean those are and how they came out. So while this is printing, it's uh, almost done with that pass. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the color or I should say the white. So I'm gonna share my screen again real quick. So I already have that set up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open it. Okay. So it's basically the same image, just saving me a moment here. So here under the settings, I'm using just standard level three. Okay, I know people have talked about doing the, uh, instead of level or actually dark colored t-shirt mode, uh, actually doing the dark colored t-shirt white. But what happens with that is it's actually gonna uh, create a grayscale for the uh, white base. It's not gonna do uh, the standard white. So I like to go with the standard, just the level three. Again, unidirectional allows me to, um, get that uh, unidirectional where it lets me have a little bit of time in between passes to let that ink dry. Uh, and then on the ink density, I find just going to flat 50 on the minus 50 on the ink uh, is giving me a little thinner white and it's not overbearing as far as the texture and feel where it doesn't feel that rubbery transfer fill when you go ahead and, uh, and uh, do, do the uh, transfer. Anyway, uh, just go ahead and hit print on that. And obviously we still have the image reversed. In a little uh, minute to dry while this is coming over. And as soon as this comes over, then I can go ahead and hit uh, print and it's gonna lay my white pass. I also added a 20 second pause which is gonna allow me to cancel in between the white and the color pass. Now we also have a rip, uh, the Easy Rip Pro, and you can actually do where it's gonna print the color first, then the white, so you don't have to worry about canceling. You can just go ahead and hit print, uh, and we have some settings set up for the DTF in there for both the uh, 2100 and the 3070. So right now it's uh, laying down a nice thin coat of the white. And once that's done, then we can go ahead and hit it with the heat gun again for a moment, uh, just to kind of, like I said, pull some of that moisture around the perimeter mainly of the print because it's gonna wet that uh, material. Now our material is looks matte on both sides. Some materials out there are shiny on one, matte on the other. Uh, on ours, it's obviously the uh, upside is gonna be the side you're gonna print on. And if there is a concern of which one is which, or you flipped it or something happened, you can just wet your finger and uh, you'll see that it's gonna take the coating off of the side that is actually the part that has the, uh, the uh, emulsion or the uh, coating on it. The one thing I do want to mention on this right now that I didn't mention earlier is there's a lot of, uh, I guess, back and forth out there about people uh, reducing your white area to, uh, or increasing the number from the two to a three or a four, or something like that as a starting point. I didn't adjust mine, I left it at two. And on these logos, I can see that there's a nice hairline of color around the white. So the white isn't spreading over the edge of the color and isn't gonna cause an issue for me. So, you know, I would say, you know, look at what you're printing first, especially if you're ordering the material from us because ours tends to work well based on the settings that I just uh, mentioned to you here, so. So right now I am canceling it and so I'm going to bring that back out 
as soon as it cancels. So that's what I got going on right now. So at this point, I'm just gonna lay it in this tray. Again, this is just a cookie sheet and I can concentrate the powder in the specific areas that I need it. Now this material is reusable, by the way, if you keep it in a clean surface. So at that point, I'm just gonna kind of give it one quick roll back and forth. And then go ahead and pop that down. If there's any areas that I think I need to look at, where there's a little bit of powder there, I can make sure those are off. So at this point, typically what I would do is just use some parchment paper, put that to protect my rubber real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up for about 20 seconds. We actually have a unit that you can purchase to heat up the uh, bottom of the platen to give a better cure on here because we also want to make sure that we're pulling the moisture out in between the ink layers uh, before we actually do the transfer onto the fabric. So this is going to help with that process and make it a lot faster. So now I can go ahead and put film down and just do a quick cover and I just leave it, you let it go for 90 seconds here. And then uh, once that is done, uh, we have a close up we'll show you here and it should have like an orange peely look to the glue on there uh, to get a nice transfer. That's basically it. Again, thank you for your time today. Uh, you have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.